another game, another win, another series won, and another game where a starter has gone six innings or more for the Yankees. By taking the game, the second game of a three-game series tonight against the Baltimore Orioles by a score of eight to two. All in all, a solid game. Domingo Herman was solid again. Six innings, four hits, one earned run, six strikeouts, two walks, and uh, all in all, good game. And then uh, Lucas Lickey threw a scoreless seventh. Uh, Justin Wilson threw a scoreless eighth. Sessa gave up a run in the ninth, but on a couple of base hits. But all in all, he closed the game out, and the Yankees won by a score of eight to two. And uh, another solid game for the Yankees. I mean, they're, they have good momentum, and they should be beating these teams. Uh, that's the that's the bottom line. And you know, some of the offense, you had a two-run single by Gary Sanchez, another home run. Uh, uh, Aaron Judge, it's his 11th home run. He's, I think he's tied for the league in the American League right now, tied for the lead in the American League. And we had Luke Voigt with an RBI single. Um, Tyler Wade scores, and then uh, DJ, I think, was it DJ, DJ LeMahieu? Struck out, but there was a wild pitch, and uh, one of the runners scored. And uh, I think it may, it may have been LeMahieu that scored. But all in all, it was a solid day offensively and pitching wise for the Yankees. And, you know, they, they just, they're playing better baseball. They really are. And the pitchers are more consistent. You know, I still worry about Jamison Tyon a little bit. His home and away splits are vastly different. Corey Kluber's getting stronger as well. And I still, I still think the Yankees should make a move for a starting pitcher at the deadline if it's a if it's a top front line pitcher. But we'll see what they we'll see what they do. They still have Davy Garcia out in the alternative site too in AAA, so he's available too. And but on the other note, on the other hand, um, it looks like Aaron Hicks. There's a possibility he might have to have wrist surgery. He's got a torn. I think it's a ligament in his wrist. And if that happens, it's, it sounds as if they might be bringing up Estevan Florial, potentially, as uh, somebody, another outfield option for him. But Brett Gardner is going to be playing a lot more. And then actually, now that in hindsight, it's it's Brett Gardner re-signing has become that much more significant, that much more necessary, that much more important. So I'm really glad that they brought him back. And uh, he's coming into his own a little bit more now. He's getting a little bit better. He's doing things a little bit better. And, and he's providing steady le ve uh, veteran leadership. So... Glad to have him back. And if so, Giancarlo Stanton's been sitting a couple of days. He's day to day right now uh, with a tight quad, but I mean, tightness in the muscle, I mean, has tended to lead to IL trips for players, particularly ones that are large like Judge and Stanton. So if he does happen to go on the injured list, I really, really hope, uh, you know. There's a right-handed power bat that's been in the minors for like a decade who just mashes. And now to me it would be an opportunity to call up Chris Gittens, give him a shot. And um, you know, he has that right-handed power bat like Stan. He can DH. He, could, you know, he doesn't even have to play every day because they have all the other guys too. But I, w I would love to see him get an opportunity here. And I'm not like I want Stanton to go on the IL, but – because he's been, you know, playing really well and hitting really well. But if he does, Gittens to me is a prime candidate. I know they've got Derek Dietrich and some other guys as well, but Gittens to me, I I really really hope they give him a give him a shot, even if it's for a little while, just to give him a cup of coffee in the majors. He's earned it. He really has earned it. And you know, if, if I were Cashman, if I were Boone, I would I would definitely uh, I would definitely encourage that move. And you know, he, he just. Uh, you know, and he's not a strikeout machine like some of the other right-handed power bats we've had over time. You know, he's got good contact, but he hits bombs. And even though the Yankees are playing more small ball than ever before, and I have I have a feeling some you know some of it has to do with the, not only the shifts, but but more along the lines of the, the less kind of uh, active baseballs. Even though a good a good chunk of major leaguers are still hitting home runs and stuff like that, but all in all, offense is down for the most part across the board in major leagues, and the, and the less lively balls, I should say, have something to do with it. But with that said, these are major league ball players. They should be able to hit the both sides of the field. They should be able to improvise. These guys are making bowls of money, and they're playing baseball their whole life. So if there's a shift, find the opening on the other side. If there's a shift here, find the opening on the other side. You know, And, and, and it's, these are things, in my opinion, that major league ball players should be able to do. You know, even if you spray the ball, even if you get a single to the out, Single's better than nothing. It's better than a pop-up, better than a strikeout. So, and a single's better than a walk if there's a runner on third. Unless the bases are loaded. 
in which case it still could be better because if you hit a if you walk with the bases loaded, you get a run. You get single with the bases loaded, chances are you get two. But if the bases aren't loaded and there's a runner on third, you drive in the run with a single. You don't with the walk. So it's it's just to me it's you know it's a little bit off topic, but it's something that I think players should be able to do when it when it comes to the shift and things like that. But all in all, back to the Yankees, it was a solid game, another win, another series in the books. And uh, with with them, uh, the Yankees being on the winning side, so they're playing good baseball right now. Hopefully, they continue the momentum. Tomorrow is the rubber game of the three game series before they take uh, take it on the road again. And um, you know, it's 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 going to be interesting to see how they do against you know Texas, Chicago, Boston, and teams like that. I'm really curious to see how they fare, and then against some of the you know the tougher teams like Oakland and even the Angels, who are kind of s- deceptively deceptively getting better even though they're frustrating uh i have a feeling they could take off at any point in time and if they do i think you know an impetus for them would be to to bring in a starting pitcher a frontline guy at the deadline so we'll see what happens um by the way my next video and it's coming out tomorrow morning you're not going to want to miss it i'm going to go over my three three guys who i think they're going to be very big surprises to be traded by the deadline that you're not going to think that will be traded but likely will be traded so not gonna want to miss that so hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss it and then obviously be doing the, uh, the yankee recap after tomorrow's game as well so thanks for watching and i'll talk to you then